thing now. Welcome everybody to our weekly English online Pernod Toastmasters meeting where we just have a ton of fun, we support each other, we laugh as crazy people because well, we have two Tereskas who are really crazy, but we like to laugh a lot with them, on them, with everybody else, that's what we do around here. But the main point of our meetings is to help our members to get better at speaking, presenting, scripting their speeches, preparing their speeches, executing their speeches, just getting better, you know, that feeling, oh, I can look into the camera. I don't have to look everybody else. Uh, I'm not talking like a slot that doesn't even know where the camera is and nobody even understands what the hell am I talking about. So, welcome. Um, I have an official thing. We are an international community dedicated to helping its members to master their communication, leadership and entrepreneurship skills by giving them a training platform and feedback to their performance. You can find that written on our Facebook. We took a lot of time to write that down. So hope you appreciate it. Hi, Vivian, our timer. Hello. Awesome, Vivian is going to be our timer. I'm going to explain everything to you right now. Give me a second how we start. I'm going to share my screen. Hope nothing nasty comes up. Okay, this is the agenda for tonight. Um, my name is Peter. You can see like the Toastmaster, you know, that's me. Then we have our speaker, Teresa, who is going to talk about some Andrew. I don't know who's Andrew, but we will find out. Later on, we will have two evaluators who will evaluate Teresa's speech. And these amazing two girls will be talking about how Teresa's done if she was fast enough, like all these kind of amazing things, you know, that she can learn. Then we will continue with Quizmaster Bernadette, who's also a timer, but not really because Vivian arrived. So Bernadette, you are just a timer. Thank you. And uh, Quizmaster's role is very simple. Bernadette will pay attention throughout the entire evening, pick up things here and there, and then ask you about it. You know, so for example, Who's the Toastmaster of the evening, right? Since I'm the only one of two guys here. This is quite fun, actually. There's only two guys tonight. Everything else is girls. Oh, man. And I'm the Toastmaster. Yeah. Good thing. Um, not women shy or anything. We have Quizmaster. Then we have our timer, who is Vivian. Vivian will tell us how well did we do with our time. And then in the end, we have our general evaluator, Sonia, who has this amazing heart flying all around still valentine theme behind her and what will what she will do is she'll explain and she'll evaluate everything that i've done i've talked about all the other evaluators talked about and then we will just say goodbye to everybody if you want to or you can just stay hang around get to meet people because this I believe is the most powerful thing about those masters and especially about our club is that you get to meet people from all around the world. We have Bernadette here, who's from Philippines. We get people, we, we have Becky. Becky's from USA, right? Becky, wait, I saw Becky here. Let me stop sharing. There we go. Uh, what did, oh yeah, there she, there she, there she, Becky. Hey, Becky, Becky is from USA, right? And we get people from all around. So yes, we are a bunch of Slovaks, but we do have Philippine friends. We do have US friends. We do have French friends. We have all kinds of friends from all around the world. And if you happen to be on one of, of one, our meeting on 5th of March, you will get to meet one really special guy, but about that later on. Shall we start with the questioning and interrogation of our members? We have this tradition here, you know, that at the beginning, the Toastmaster of the evening is going to ask a question. And it has to be a really good question. And since we are so few tonight and we have one speaker less, this question can be bigger. I'm curious, dear girls and Yaroslav. It's so funny. <laughs> It was Valentine's quite recently. Tell me, how does your ideal Valentine look like? And you have three sentences to tell me. 
okay? Your ideal Valentine in three sentences or less. I will start. My ideal Valentine is very simple. I get to do nothing all day. My fiance does everything for me. She cooks, she cleans, she takes care of me, she takes care of everybody, you know, and then I wake up from my dream. Something like that. We will continue with my fiance, Sonia. Hello, everyone. Well, I have my fiance, and you know what? He cooks for me, he tidies up the whole flat, he looks after me. And well, I didn't woke up from a dream, but he tied it up the day after the Valentine's. So a bit slowish process, but he did fulfill majority of the ideas. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sonia. We will continue with Bernadette. What's your ideal Valentine? Well, my ideal Valentine was just cleaning the house, rearranging again my, the position of my <laughs> desk. And uh, putting some floor mat on on my on my other room so that I can make that as a display for my store online store. And of course, my dogs are very being so endearing that they give me all this mess or in the, on the floor that I have to to wash or clean everything. They come inside, so that was my ideal or how my Valentine word uh, worked. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people enjoy cleaning on Valentine or like they have to at least. We will continue. We will continue with who? Who? Let's take care of Yaroslav since he's the only other guy in here. Uh, ideal Valentine for me is reading a book, watching and TV and doing nothing. Sounds like a dream. And when do you wake up from it? Of uh, at uh, eleven o'clock. That's a good time to wake up. I agree. We will continue with one of our new guests, Laura. So I usually spend my Valentine single. So my ideal Valentine, I just watch movies. I eat some chocolate by myself. I drink wine, and I go to take a walk with my dog. And that's about it. Thank you. I actually wrote a Valentine's email promotion, something very similar like dinner, wine, chocolate. It's not everyone's ideal Valentine, you know. Treat yourself instead and buy this beauty revealer. Don't worry about it. That's about something else. We'll continue. Thank you, Laura. We'll continue with uh, another of our guests, Renka. Uh, Renata for our international people. Oh. I don't know because Valentine is for me like every single day. So it's a lot of sleep, chocolate, and spending time with my cat and do some sports. I think it's the day. <laughs> you Valentine. have only one cat? Oh, three. Three cats. Okay. Yeah. Our neighbor has <laughs> 10, and she's not a crazy cat lady yet. We'll continue. Thank you, Renka. Now, our speaker of tonight. Teresa, what about your ideal Valentine? Thank you for your question. For me, my ideal Valentine was this year because I was a whole day, I was just laying in my bed, watching Gossip Girl and Sex in the City, drinking wine with my mom and reading this amazing book, which is about vagina. So I think it was pretty relevant. Oh, it's nice. It, it actually translates... Uh, about vagina without shame or something like that. Well, I like talking about vaginas. I mean, what guy doesn't like talking about vagina? But we don't have an off-grid meeting, okay? Dif different time, different day. Now, Becky, what about you? Thank you for the question. I actually do not celebrate Valentine's Day on Valentine's Day. I feel it should be celebrated throughout the whole year, which makes it a lot more difficult for my fiance. And I always tell him, if I ever want to celebrate on Valentine's Day, it means you have been slacking for an entire year. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I agree that Valentine's is not too necessary, but we do get to be a little bit more 
special and festive and that's always fun you know have a, another reason to give something to our loved ones let's continue digna what about your amazing valentine's day unmute first You got to unmute first and then you can speak. Okay. There you go. Oh, my Valentine's was celebrated. It was very fun because I have three gay friends. <laughs> we had dinner and after we go to the mall and find a good place to drink milk tea and have a good conversation. And I think it's uh, Valentine's is also celebrated Retired with friends. That's all. Definitely. That 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 sounds like an idea for a crazy love story. You know, three gays and me. <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy. Okay, who didn't I speak to yet? I spoke to almost everybody. I Tessa. What about your ideal Valentine's Day? <laughs> ideal Valentine. Hmm. I would say spending it with my family all the people I love, I would say, yeah. What about the cat? I like my cat, but it's not like the priority for me. Oh, okay, poor cat. I understand, I understand. I believe I didn't skip anybody, did I? No, no, I didn't, awesome. It's hard time counting, you know, 6.15 p.m., old guy. We will continue with our normal program, agenda, whatever you want to call it. Where's Vivian, by the way? Wasn't she here just a second ago? Oh, that's weird. What do you think? It is a Valentine mystery. It is a Valentine mystery. All right, then. Well, this meeting is going uphill, downhill, all hill. We are fine with it. We'll roll with it. Bernadette, can you please be our timer again? Thank you. Awesome. I will now introduce our one and only amazing speaker of tonight, who is Teresa, who also brought two guests. Thank you very much. Bernds, you, you brought only one, so Teresa wins tonight. No candy. No worry. Teresa will talk about how to be better than Andrew. I don't know who Andrew is, but he sounds like he is very good at something, I guess. And it's a free speech, so it's not really into our systems. It's just something that Teresa wants to share with us and talk about. I'm really interested what she's going to talk about. Teresa, the stage is yours. How many of you have ever missed a deadline? Where's your hand? How many of you have ever spent two hours scrolling your phone instead of being productive? And how many of you have ever overeaten because of stress? Oh yes, yeah, so many hands. Hello, Toastmasters and dear friends. It can be really hard sometimes. Today, I'm gonna try to help you with all these problems. And I'm gonna try offer you a solution. One of the main reasons why all of this might be happening is a hormone called dopamine. To be clear, hormones are really important to our body because they control our feelings, our emotions, in general, our biological existence. Dopamine has a specific name, hormone of reward and of desire. But for today, I'm going to call it Andrew as my old friend. And everybody else, Andrew has its up and downs. His angel side is that he can motivate you in anything that you're doing. For example, when you help that old lady to carry her heavy bags, and you will say, good job, buddy, and you'll feel just great. And in the future, you'll help her again. 
that there is a dark side of Andrew. He is the reason of so many problems. To realize and to understand his evil side, we need to realize that the human race is so lazy that we won the contest of laziness. But actually we were too lazy to take it, so we don't have a reward. That's why we choose a movie instead of reading a book. Because as the laziest being in the world, we want immediate answers, immediate rewards, immediate pleasure. That's why we order junk food instead of spending hours in the kitchen. That's why we spend two whole day watching stupid videos instead of accomplishing a task which is really important for our work. In fact, our whole population is addicted to dopamine. And Andrew is, is just sitting in your head all satisfied and smiling and whispering, kill me more. I want more. Just one more video. Just one more French fry, please. And then I will stop. But guess what? He never stops. The whole world is down there screaming with Andrew, I want more. And we keep on wanting more more rewards, more pleasures with no work. And at the end, when we finally have to actually do something for real for our job, we just cannot concentrate. Today, I'm going to offer you a solution. How to be stronger than Andrew. How to start to like my job again. How to start to doing or to focus on my studies again. It's not gonna be easy though, but I think that all together we can do it. And this amazing thing that will help you is called, da -da -da -da, a little bit of drama, of course. Can you see it? Oh, please. Just give me a sign that you see it. You can see it? Yeah, dopamine detox, wow. So you will just need a pen and a paper. First of all, you have to write down what is the most difficult but the most important thing for you that you can't focus on. Personally, for my personal experience, it was learn for two hours a day Hide in my room, exercise, read a book, and go for a walk. Secondly, you will write another list. The list of things that keep on disturbing you. For me, it was notifications, TV, social media, candies, and of course my mom who keeps texting me all the time on Messenger. The third thing, you're gonna need is to choose a day of a week in the calendar. For me, it was Friday. And now it's really simple. Every week, every Friday, you will not, well, I wasn't able to go, I was able only <laughs> to go on a walk, to read a book, and on the other hand, I couldn't watch TV series, I couldn't use my phone, and with all of these, if you do it regularly, your level of dopamine in your body will slowly start to decrease. And then you will be able to resist. You will be able to fight with Andrew in your head, and he will be not any more uh, screaming, oh my God, I want more because you will be stronger than him. Please just be patient 
and give it your give it time because your body is so slow and we are so lazy so just take a deep breath and go with the flow it's not that hard and it can really help you to feel better and to do better in your work Thank you very much, Teresa. Now, do you see what I'm doing with my hands? Do you know why I'm doing it? I didn't explain in the beginning. It's basically clapping for people who can't hear. Well, because who can't hear clapping if you are deaf? Nobody. That's why we do this, right? We do this at Toastmasters because we are all muted. Counts like we are deaf. Same thing. Another thing that I didn't mention is that we do have panel evaluations. And what that means is Teresa is going to get her normal evaluation from another Teresa. But besides that, she will be also open to evaluations and ideas and opinions from you, the guest, everybody else, basically, right? So right now, I will introduce her evaluator, who will be Tessa or Teresa Jančova. We had hard time to distinguish these two, you know, we needed to start to like, one is Teresa, one is Tereska, one is Tessa, who's that, who's, we had issues, right? Everybody works with some issues, that's fine. Hold on, I'll switch to gallery view. And I would like our evaluator Tessa to come on to the state, the stage, right? And share her evaluation about Teresa's speech. And I think Teresa is almost ready to listen. Yeah, she's ready. Go ahead. Thank you so much, Mr. Toastmaster. It's nice to see you here. Dear, dear ladies and gentlemen, I have a chance to evaluate our wonderful, I have to say wonderful speaker, Teresa, today. I was talking to her before her speech. What should I be focusing on in your speech? She was talking about gestures and use of voice. And I asked her if I can give her challenge. And she was like, okay, go on. My challenge was to focus on standing on a podium. As you can see, she was standing when she was delivering the speech. And she had issues with standing on only one place. I have to say that she accepted the challenge today. She was able to stand on one place. Most of the time, only exceptions were taking the sunglasses and uh, using the PowerPoint presentation. Well done. I have to say that she, she used her voice very well. She was speaking louder, for example, dopamine detox or fight, or when she was giving us solution, she wanted us to concentrate and she lowered her voice. That was very nicely done. I have to say, I don't have any challenges or requirements for her next speech because it was really good. Maybe move your camera a little bit lower because we saw most of your wonderful gestures that were up here, but the ones that were quite lower, we couldn't see them. And that would be all from the visual side and to the content. I think that was really motivational as well as educational and informational. I like the content and I think we all can relate. And you started with questions that engaged us in the beginning. So I think that was well, well prepared and well delivered. Thank you. Thank you, Tessa, very much. I definitely agree. It was a very well prepared speech. Now I'm opening a window, not a window, I'm opening space for panel evaluation. So you are able to give Teresa some evaluation yourself. I will start. What 
intrigued my attention and will repeat it uh, whilst when she started to flick her fingers. That took a lot of my attention. I could focus and I knew what she's trying to convey with her message. I like that a lot. On the other side, what I would improve, it's dopamine, not dopamine. That's it. Who's uh, next? Sonia. It was said already, but I love the dramatization. I was wondering who the Andrew is. And I know I have my own Andrew. Now I know what's his name. But I like that you told us that it's him. It's not some other guy like Peter. It's Andrew. I really like how you play with the voice. It was really entertaining and really nice to watch and observe. So for me, that was the highlight. Uh, for the suggestion, what you could do, feel free to next time have it a longer. I know that this was a short notice. You can make it a longer speech in the future and involve the audience more to get them maybe tell you if they call their dopamine a different name. Maybe they don't have the Andrew. Maybe they have Peter. Or maybe they have Lanka. God knows. So just feel free to involve the audience more. It would be interesting to see in this kind of question how people will react because I think that we all know and have our own dopamine friend. Thank you, Sonia, very much. We all have our Andrew, but it's like, why is it not Teresa? It's Andrew. Yeah, of course, it has to be a guy. Never mind. Who else would like to give some feedback to Teresa in her speech? Anything. It, it doesn't matter if you are skilled or anything. You can tell her what you liked, what you didn't like. It's all feedback as long as you are honest. Counting once. Becky. Thank you so much for a wonderful speech. I really, really enjoyed it. I loved how you set it up and went through all of your points. And I, I really liked the PowerPoint coming in midway through because you didn't need it until that point. And I think a lot of people will try and force it if they need a PowerPoint, they try and force it throughout the whole speech. And because you didn't need it, I thought it was great that you left it until later. I would work just a little bit on strengthening the conclusion to be as strong as your introduction. So it, that would be the point at which I would engage the audience again. Do you think you can do this? Do you think that you can defeat your inner Andrew? Thank you. Thank you very much. We are in the red. That means that we will continue with the rest of our evening. Teresa, thank you very much for an amazing speech. Later on, we will cut it out from the recording and you will be using it to promote yourself to land great jobs. Don't worry, you got this. Now, continuing with the rest of our evening, we'll usually have roles that are called like ah counter. This role is dedicated for someone who catches our ums, ahs, so's, and all this kind of stuff that's not supposed to be in our speech. We do not have that person today, but that's okay. And we sometimes have a grammarian as well who checks our English, our grammar and everything. But we have Becky today. And I think if we really screw the English up, she will tell us, you know, she, no, she won't. Yeah, she will. She will. <laughs> and since we don't have either of those, we will continue with Burns as our quiz master. Bernadette, what questions do you have for us? Uh, how many minutes am I supposed to do this? Three? Yes, it's three minutes and then two minutes as a timer. Since you have both of these roles, it's up to you how to how you manage your time. All right, I'll just put the three, five minutes. All right, guys, for tonight, I would like to just give a raise of hands for you, for those of you who could answer. So unmute yourselves. 
two points for those who could answer first, one point for the rest who got the right answer. So first is what is important in Toastmasters here in Onlinepreneurs? What did Peter said about being important here? Unmute yourselves, because I won't be hearing anything. <laughs> Nothing. Being here, being talkative, having that fun. Be, but most of all, it's networking and developing our speaking skills. Uh, speaking skills and leadership skills and mm -hmm. online entrepreneurship skills. Yeah. Not counted because I was the one who answered it. <laughs> joke. All you right. have two points. Yes. Uh, where is Becky from? USA. Where exactly? Mi Mi Indiana. Michigan. Michigan. Michigan City. Yeah. Michigan. Where is Michigan? <laughs> Michigan Indiana. City, Indiana. Indiana, Michigan. yes. Michigan, Michigan City, is Indiana is at the very bottom of Lake Michigan, right between Mi the state of Michigan and the state of Illinois, where Chicago is. Okay, point, point for Sonia and Yaroslav. Okay, so what is the tradition before we start the meeting here in Onlinepreneurs? Tradition, tradition. We have our tradition. Question, questioning. Yes, correct. Two points for Tessa. Two? Yeah, you got the answer. You're the only one who got the answer. <laughs> Whoever got the first answer will get two points. The rest will just get one point if they're correct. So what was one of Toastmaster Peter's dream? Marty's mentioned one of the dream of Peter. That Sonia care, takes care of him and she cooks and tidies and do everything, does everything. Ah, yeah, okay, it point. is a dream. Two points for Peppa. And What's the ideal Valentine of Yaroslav? To read. Read. And watch TV. And watch and TV. Wake up at 11. Tessa, two points for watching TV. And for Laura's Valentine's Day. Laura, you cannot answer. <laughs> Drinks wine. wine and yeah. Who, who's the first one who got in? Me. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I guess there's one more. I oh, know we still have a few more. What's the solution? Uh, uh, who is Andrew by Toastmaster Teresa's Dop dopamine? Yes, the point. It, it's her dopamine. Her dopamine. Yeah. Always... Correct. What was her number two problem or solution? What was one of her two, uh, number two problems was on her list. Uh, her phone. Oh, yes. Two points, Becky. Who oh. oh, still wants to answer some more? We'll just leave it to Becky. <laughs> Social media, TV series. Yeah, and, and mom texting. Mom texting. That's how you have two, two, two points. So four points. <laughs> so let's see. Who is Andrew, by the way, not, not as dopamine, but what does he do in, her, in our system? He screams that he wants more. Yes, correct. Those masters, yeah, two points. And well, that last one is, what is those master Teresa's Valentine's Day? Uh, they, I, I mean, how did she celebrate her Valentine's Day? What was she the movie that you watched? Movies that you watched? Gossip Girl and Sex in the City. Ah, two points, two points. <laughs> yes. So that's the end of our quiz. My quiz mastering here. So I think a lot of you have, have been uh, listening. And now I'll be moving to my timers report. For my timers report, Toastmaster Teresa, you are within your time, although you have four seconds over the time limit. I mean, not over the time because we still have the 30 second leeway. Then Toastmaster Teresa, you have 
two minutes and 36 seconds for your evaluation. And that's my climber's report. Back to Toastmaster, Peter. Thank you very much, Burns, for your amazing questions. And yes, most of you did pay attention. That's great. Now, the last part of our evening is the general evaluation. In my opinion, that's the most important part of the entire evening because everyone who's attending can hear the gems and the pearls that the evaluator shares, right? And then we can take them ourselves. And then let's say next time we are speaking somewhere, we will remember that, hey, Sonia talked about this and it's important and she's going to share such a great value that I'm really looking forward to that. Sonia, the stage is yours. And now I shouldn't be scared. Okay, thank you, Peter, for introducing me to the stage. Let's start with Peter straight away, just because he was the first one at the stage and he has the biggest time. Huh. We shall give him a bit of an applause because he did a very nice job tonight. And I like that even though we started a few minutes later, Peter explained why. That we're still waiting, there should be some people who will turn up, but he explained it. So I'm fine with that, that we started a couple of minutes later because we all were aware of the changes in the agenda. He had very nice and warm welcome and even a bit of a dramatic one. But we know Peter is a little bit of a drama king. I would say drama queen, but you know, let's be gender equal drama queen or king. <laughs> <laughs> what I loved was the fact how he said our mission. He used his own words and ideas, but we heard it why we are here, what the Toastmasters is doing, and why we should attend. And I really like it that he used really his own personal feeling to that. He as well very nicely shared the agenda and led us through all the steps what would happen. During this, I would suggest as well to add the fact that yes, we are clapping like this because most of us are during the speeches muted because we don't want to disturb the speakers with the noises in the background and so on. That's why we use the hands and gestures or what Peter didn't mention, you have the little reaction buttons at the bottom of your screen and you can use a different signs and use it this way as well. So that's a suggestion. Yes, Peter, that one, you can use it and you can explain it next time. I like that uh, we had several more Toastmasters here like Becky or Riako. So in the future, Peter, feel free to give them a role. Look, Becky could tell us that my English is awesome or it's just plainly awesome or that I could use some better words. Maybe Yako would help with the time or maybe he will just entertain us with counting the ass and my favorite unnecessary word starting you know which part of my name i can't say it otherwise i will use it you know feel free to use that you have more toastmasters here give them the roles explain it during the agenda we will have more time we have more fun and we will learn more otherwise i liked how you introduce the agenda you explain all what was necessary and you arrange with bernadette to take over with the timing Second thing is, was that when you were introducing the speaker, I like that you were very natural and very entertaining. However, feel free to talk a little bit more about Tereska. She's the main star of tonight. And even though you and me never heard about Andrew till the speech, you could check with her. Might be something connected to Valentine's. You know, more people might be interested to come and hear about Andrew. So in the future, feel free to give more of the light to the main speaker. And as well, when you are introducing the speaker, don't forget to 
say that we will have the panel evaluation. So we are all ready. I was ready, but the reminder is nice to have that. Yeah, take notes. Everyone can evaluate and Tereska and will really appreciate that. What do you heard? What do you might think that could be done better? We are all growing thanks to the feedback. I will give, uh, I won't be giving the Tereska her evaluation. I will write it into the note because she was the speaker, but I will go to another Teresa in this group, but we call her Tessa as Peter mentioned. Teresa and Teresa in the same group. It's a bit of a trouble. So Tessa as our main evaluator. Very professional, very warm, very supportive. I really liked how you were leading us through the whole evaluation. You as well, same as Tereska, use the vocal variety. Use the pauses, use the louder voice, the quieter voice. You told us what you like on the visual side and what you like on the content side. And it is nice that you put both of the sides together. But this was done very nicely as well on a presentation. This is what I think about the content. I really like that you were putting it together. What was awesome was as well the ending. It was very positive and very encouraging. And I think every speaker would love that to hear it that, yes, I did it. My suggestion is very simple. More suggestions. More suggestions. I know it's very helpful, but you know, Tereska can handle it. Tell her to speak more, make it a longer, do an education session, how she can tell us how to really beat that Andrew. Engage the audience, prepare a bigger presentation, make it a longer, you know, she, she can make an awesome career presenting how to fight the dopamine. She can use it for her future studies, offer more suggestions. Otherwise it was amazing. And I wish you going to evaluate me next time. You might have a chance. Quizmaster Bernadette. Great questions. <clears throat> you are very, and the suggestion is you are very kind. We obviously weren't listening that good. I know Peter thinks that we did, but we didn't. Your questions were really good and you really lifted the mood and I really enjoyed it even though I was struggling with answering the questions. <sighs> I like that you were counting the points and you told us that the first correct uh, person is getting two points and then everyone else gets the one point. I'm not sure who won. That would be a quite good thing to know that, yeah, please tell us the winner because I was counting uh, and then I don't know where I'm ended. Huh. I know I'm not listening and I'm not counting. It might be my fault. But you were entertaining and it was great fun. Regarding the timing, it was very nice and very simple. You told us the times and I think I saw them already in the chat, which is very nicely done. Everyone can. Oh, okay. Thank you. Head to head, Tessa and Becky. Okay, please give a big applause to our best paying attention people here. I'll return back to the timing part. I like that you put uh, the times as well into the chat. You as well explained that uh, the girl, I think Tereska was in the red zone. Feel free to tell the colors on both sides that both speakers had the colors. Otherwise it was awesome and I really enjoyed it. That's my short evaluation for tonight. And overall, I really like that. Thank you for the green color. I overall really like that we had even though a shorter meeting, we heard the great speech, we heard the great evaluation, we had the fun, we listened a bit. I hope you all learn what to do with your Andrew, Peter, Lenka, Tereska, whatever you name it, how to fight it. And you have some ideas what to do on the next Valentine's Day. 
just please don't come here and look after Peter and cook for him and tidy up our flat. He might be a bit lazy afterwards, so no, thank you. But I appreciate that you would want to do that. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad that you came and enjoyed it. And I might have a closing question, a short one. Because we all know that we do have our Andrew. And you heard some ideas what Tereska suggest, suggested. My question would be, what is your main problem when you are fighting a Mr. Andrew? And if you think you can tackle him, or her, depends on <clears throat> if it's him or her for you, because Peter was unhappy that it's always a man. For me, hmm, I think my biggest troubles are still social media, even though I'm trying to be very, very rarely there. And I'm not giving up the hope that one day my angel will be gone. But that's my hope. I hope that I will manage. And I will go straight away to my right side. Tessa, your biggest Andrew problem. And if you believe you can handle it, based on the suggestion from Tereska. That's a difficult question. I would say with all of that, the time management, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, I'll go to Bernadette because I see that she's showing me the red card. Please don't cut us off, Bernadette, because I really want to know what is your biggest injury problem and if you believe you can fight him or her. My biggest Andrew problem is probably procrastinating, keeping things moving like later. But I think the, the thing that I could fight it with, it would be just, um, well, just find something to just tinker around or put it on a list of my task or my to-dos. That's it. Very nice. Becky, your biggest Andrew moment. My biggest Andrew problem is definitely new ideas and new projects that get in the way of finishing the stuff that I already started. And so this year I've been trying to tackle them very similar to Bernadette by putting things on a to do later list so that I don't forget the new idea, but I'm still motivated to finish what I'm already working on. Very good. Thank you, Becky. Renatka, do you have your big Andrew problem? Mm, I have my Andrew procrastination and social media. And I don't want one application called Forest. And when I start, this application is like the static growing trees. I can use my phone because the trees can't grow. So this is how I trying to fight with my Andrew. <laughs> awesome. I think I will need to find that application for myself. Thank you very much for sharing. Digna. Can you unmute and tell us your biggest Andrew problem? Oh, for me, it's my, I don't have focus. I have a lot of things to do in a day and I feel I'm busy, but I don't have a lot of, I don't have the production or effective on my plan for a day. It's like, I like it, that's why I really love the speech because it's helped me a lot. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. I think Tereska is very happy and definitely will share more ideas how to tackle injury problems. But I see that Laura is smiling nicely at me. And I want to know, Laura, your biggest injury problem. Uh, my biggest injury problem is also procrastination and postponing things to later because I try every morning just say things that I would like to do in a day, if it's exercise or go for a walk or anything really. And then during the day, I just keep postponing it. Like I will exercise after the lunch, I will do it in the evening. And usually I don't do it at all. So that's what I need to work on, but I will try uh, Teresa's tips and hopefully it will help me. Well, you can come next time and share with us how you did. Jarko, your biggest injury problem. My biggest injury problem is uh, laziness because I doing nothing when I don't must do it. <laughs> and I need deadline and, and so on and so on. Yeah, laziness is very tough injury problem. Yes. I, I do have experience with that. Thank you, Jarko, for sharing. Thank you. Tereska, I know you shared with us already, but the biggest, biggest of the biggest injuries, you know, the most. The biggest one is just to begin because when I, for example, already start to study, I can do it for a whole day with no problem because I really like it. And um, really, I'm happy that my school really interests me. But to force me to start, it's the worst thing. And I will just tell you the last thing. Please don't be mad at yourself if you need to rest because it's also really really important because if you don't rest and if you want to be overproductive you will just burn out so please pay attention to this yeah last but not least the last biggest injury on the list will be from peter peter I have a lot of Andrews, you know, I'm like, they are, they are thugs. I, I can say my Andrews are thugs. They're, they are nasty, mean, big guys, really muscly, you know, and it's hard to fight them. I think their leader would be either procrastination or laziness, you know, either one of those two. But I think like one's alpha male, the other's beta male, you know, and it's Andrew against Andrew and sometimes when they're fighting I just can sit down and well I guess it's time to watch something you know instead of being productive again <laughs> that's my Andrew thank you Peter yeah I think podcast would be a very good idea I agree with that and I definitely think we would like to have the part two who is for that Please raise your hands. Tereska, you, you see it. We want it. Make it longer. Use the presentation. Have a discussion. Create the podcast. Uh, what did I forget? You can create the HPL project uh, for fighting the procrastination and the Andrews all around the world. Whatever you do, we want to hear about that. And with that, I would like to officially close tonight's meeting. I will ask Peter to stop the recording. Please, I'm